Anybody at home?
speak to you for a moment, please. Is it a business matter? Well, it's rather urgent. Oh, all right, come in. Thanks. In here? That's it. Do sit down. Thanks. I don't think I know you, do I? No, we haven't met officially, but you must have noticed me quite a lot recently. Well, hello, where? On the mantelpiece. I've been there for some time now. I was there watching you every time you came to make love to my wife. In fact, I should have thought that anyone with a touch of finer feeling would have turned me to the wall or at least covered me with a crepe. You're Lee Warren. That's right. But I thought that you were in America. Vivian had a cable from you yesterday. What will these husbands do next? I suppose Vivian told you that we'd been... You've been what? Well, that we'd been out together. Very nicely put. I didn't mind the going out, it's the staying in that I objected to. I don't know what you mean. Don't you? No. I'd better tell you. I've been away for eight months. During my absence, my wife has been spending a lot of time with you. Now I want to know where I stand. You must ask Vivian that. I will, of course. But first, I want to know what you're offering. Offering? Yes, do you want to marry her? How can I when she's married to you? Well, there is such a thing as divorce. Oh, I see. You don't like the sound of that very much? Well, frankly, no. What do you mean to say is that if I took a sock at you now and saw my solicitor in the morning, it wouldn't exactly enhance your career, would it? It isn't that so much. It's just that I'm not sure that Vivian would want to marry me. Well, that's honest anyway. It doesn't get us anywhere, does it? Well, what do you suggest we do about it? I'll tell you. Tomorrow early you can go away. Take a long holiday. I can't do that, not right away. Why not? I'm a busy man. Not busy enough, apparently. What do you do for a living? I'm a barrister. Well, then you're your own master. You can spin a yarn about your health or something. Well, I might be able to fix it somehow. I think you can. You can write a letter to Vivian, finishing the affair once and for all. But I'd like you to do it now, please. Well, very well. Wait, we'll compose it together. How do you usually address her? Vivian, dear? Oh, Vivian, darling. I love you. You got that? Yes. But I realize that whatever your feelings are for me now, you love your husband and always will. And always will. Paragraph. I cannot bear to be near you and to know that you can never be mine. And if what I'm about to do may seem cowardly to you. Cowardly? Your trip, you're running away without seeing her. Oh, all right. Cowardly to you. It is the only way out. So tomorrow, I'm going away on an extended trip abroad. When I return, I hope that you will again be happy with your husband and our friendship, but a happy memory of the past. Love, uh, again, whatever you usually put. Love always. That's right. Love always. How does that strike you? Well, I think I see what you're getting at, Warren. You want all traces of opposition out of the way so that you two can try to get together again. Exactly. You know, you're very understanding, Clinton. In other circumstances, I could almost like you. Thank you. What about a drink now? I should like one. Whiskey? Please. Was your American trip successful? Very. Sarah? Please. You wouldn't care to settle there, I suppose? No, my roots are here. Cheers. Cheers. May I? Oh, of course. Hmm. I don't think we could improve on that. Oh, I'm so oh. sorry, Fenton. That's all right. I'll fix you another. No, it's not the drink I'm worried about. It's the letter. It's saturated. Never be able to send that. I'm afraid you'll have to write another. Well, now, look here, Warren. You can't be serious about this letter. I'm afraid I am. Sorry to be such a nuisance. All right. Pretty girl. Who is she? My sister. Why? I just wondered. You're sure it's not somebody else's wife? I don't think that's very funny. No, perhaps not. 
Don't tell him. Of course not. Hello? Oh, hello. No, 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 I'm all right. Yes, yes, of course. But well, not tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm just going out. Yes. Yes, good night. Your sister? No, your wife. I don't think that's very funny either. She wanted to bring some friends in for a drink. What a shock she'd have had. You'd better finish the letter. So, that's enough. What the devil Put is your hands behind your back. Look here. George, you told her I'll blow your guts out. What the base is you playing at, Warren? Is this a joke? A joke? No, you can turn around. Look here. Go and lie down on that sofa. What are you playing at? You have 15 seconds to get under that sofa. Now put your feet up. Suppose you realize you're laying yourself open to a charge of criminal assault? No, and I'm not interested. Now, perhaps you'll be good enough to explain your quite extraordinary behavior. Certainly. That's why I came here. Did you and Vivian often talk about me? Not often. No, I don't suppose you would. Our marriage obviously didn't mean very much to you, but it meant a great deal to me. You probably wouldn't believe this, but I can remember exactly every detail of every minute of every day since I knew I was going to America and had to leave her. I can remember exactly how she looked when I told her. She was wearing a new black dress. I didn't say very much until we'd started the dinner and the waiter had gone. Then I said, Vivian, the firm wants me to go to America. America? Yes, they want me to put over a couple of deals and make arrangements for a New York office. Will you go? No. Why not? They say I can't take you with me. But Lee, surely you're going. Do you want me to go without you? Of course I don't, but if it's your job. Oh, I get it. You're not so ridiculously jealous that you're still thinking about Paul. Nothing ridiculous about that. I promised I wouldn't see him again, ever. And I haven't. It was only a stupid little lapse. Surely you can forget that now. This trip means promotion, doesn't it? It may. Then you'd be a fool not to take it. How long would you be away? Oh, about five or six months. Well, that's not so very long. I'll write to you every day. You will? Of course I will. Get on with your soup, darling. It's getting cold. When Vivian saw me off at the airport, I could have sworn she really meant what she said. When I got to New York and settled down to work, the letters really did come every day, just as she had promised. I knew everything was all right, but I could really trust her at last. That stage lasted exactly three weeks. And this sort of thing began to happen. Here's the mail, Mr. Warren. Oh, thanks. Cable, will you? Mrs. Warren. Thanks for long letter. Stop. I'm mailing you a bottle of ink and fountain pen. Stop. Please use them. Stop. Looking forward to seeing you. Fondest love, Lee. Uh, right away, sir. In the end, I couldn't stand it any longer, so I put in a transatlantic telephone call. All one weekend, I tramped up and down the office, waiting for it to come through. And when it did, Hello? All right, I'll hold on. Vivian, is that you? Vivian, what's happened? I haven't heard from you for over a fortnight. 
But darling, I wrote to you yesterday and on Tuesday. Well, I must have forgotten to post. I know, Lee, but I've been so terribly busy. Yes, you see, Mother's in town. I've had to take her out. I know, darling, but some days it's so difficult, really, it is. All right, darling, I'll try. Yes, I promise. Hmm. I miss you terribly, too. Hmm? No, no, I'll write you every day from now on. Yes, I promise. Hello? Hello? We were cut off, but I didn't care. I'd spoken to Vivian and I was happy. That shows you the sort of fool I was about her. For a week or two, her letters arrived regularly. Then they stopped again. This time, I didn't trouble to telephone. Instead, I took the whole beautiful bar on Broadway. After a few drinks, I was able to persuade myself that nothing was wrong. But Vivian still loved me. My fool's paradise didn't last long. One night, I came upon an old tattler someone had left behind, and there, laughing up at me, was Vivian. And beside her, with his arms round her, also laughing at me, was Mr. Richard Fenton. I went back to my office to think out what I should do. I know I sat staring at the picture for hours. It seemed to me that both of you were mocking me, while I was thousands of miles away, helpless. It was then that I began to plan what I should do, in every detail. And it was then that I made up my mind how to kill you. What did you say? I said I was going to kill you. And I warn you, if you lift your voice, I'm going to gag you. Remember that. You won't be able to plead for your life with a handkerchief halfway down your throat. You must be mad to think you can get away with this. If I'm found injured, you'll be the first person they look for. If you're found injured. Look here, Baron. I'll make a bargain with you. You set me free now, and I'll go away tomorrow and say nothing about all this nonsense. Although I could prefer charges, you know. Fenton, you're very dense. This isn't nonsense. I'm in deadly earnest. You're just trying to scare me, that's all. Oh, no, you'll be more scared later on when I set to work on you. You're going to die. You're not going to like it one little bit. You wouldn't be such a fool. You can't get away with murder. Nobody can. Ah, oh, but I'm going to commit the perfect murder. There's no such thing. Oh, yes, there is. The perfect murder is the one that nobody ever hears about, because nobody thinks it is murder. That's impossible. Well, I admit it is a little difficult. But I've got a scheme which is good enough to be worth the risk. I've had plenty of time to think it out when I was in America. And you were with Vivian. There's bound to be a hole in it that always is. I warn you, I'm a lawyer and I know. There'll be a flaw in it somewhere, and that flaw will land you on the gallows as sure as you're standing there. Ah, but that's where you're going to help me. Don't talk nonsense, why should I help you? For your own sake. I'm going to tell you exactly how I propose to kill you. And I promise you, if you can find one flaw in my method, one thing that will incriminate me, I'll let you go. And if I can't? I'm sorry. You're really going through with it? Yes. You're joking, aren't you? It's a pity you're not a little more subtle. And you'd appreciate the situation. A murderer usually has to act alone. He can trust no one. But with my method, I have you to help me. Weighing and considering every detail. If you can't find a mistake, then I have the comfort of knowing that my plan has been approved by an astute lawyer. Look here, Warren. I don't know whether you want to frighten me or to kill me. Whichever it is, you won't gain your objective. Your wife isn't only interested in me, there are plenty of others too. And you can't kill them all, you fool. <laughs> Such a mouth. Very clever of you to get me to lose my temper. It's true, I tell you. Let me look at your cheek. Oh, quite a mark. Leave me alone. Lie still. Oh, luckily, it's only a surface reddening. Take your dirty hands off me! Oh, I can leave a telltale bruise on that cheek of yours. Not after I've taken all this trouble. Oh, that's all right now. Now, you lie still. And I'll show you something really interesting. Warren! Warren, you can't go out of this madness! I can tell you what it's like! This is your bedroom, isn't it? This is a little invention of my own. I'll give you a demonstration. It's quite simple. I put the end of this tube in there. 
I then put the pillow slip over your head. I draw the open end tightly around your neck. Can you hear me? Then I put the free end of the tubing into the gas jet over there and turn on the gas. Do you get the idea? Of course, you'll be able to breathe quite freely. No, what? Be sensible. Well, I won't let you help me. Can't, man. I'll do anything. I'll leave the country for good. I'll never come back. I'll give you every penny I've got in the world. Let me, let me live. You don't understand, Fenton. I loathe you. You desecrated the only precious thing I ever had. Now listen. Yes, I'll listen. I will. I'll help you. I will, I promise you. Good. Possibly you've noticed that throughout all this, I've been very careful not to hurt you or mark you. That's why I use silk scarves to bind you. You're going to be a suicide. When I put your head in this pillowcase and turn on the gas, you're going to struggle and strain every muscle in your body. But I'm not going to kill you in this room, oh no. I just want you unconscious. And I strip off the scarves while your blood is still circulating. I don't want it to coagulate till I get you to the kitchen with your head in the gas up. Hold on. Then I leave the second, the unfinished letter by your side. You began writing the second letter, then I stopped you. Do you remember? Yes. Yes, I remember. But listen, Vivian, darling, I love you. But I realize that whatever your feelings are for me now, you still love your husband and always will. I cannot bear to be near you and know that you can never be mine. If what I am about to do may seem cowardly to you, it is the only way out. That's where I stopped you. Any suggestions? Let me think. I must give me time to think. Nobody can make murder perfect. There must be a flaw in it somewhere. There must be. Go ahead, think. I, I can't. Do you see anything wrong? Uh, come on, come on. What will you say that you're doing this evening if they question you? Oh, that's easy. I arrived in London by air. I reported to my office, telephoned Vivian. She was out. So I dined alone, went straight home to bed. Anyway, a man can't be forced to put his head in the gas oven, can he? Don't forget you're not bruised. They won't find any drugs in you when they open you up. Fingerprints. Gloves. Motive. I never met you, I've never heard of you. No one knows that I've found out about you. Somebody must have seen you come in here. If I hadn't taken care of that, I shouldn't be here now. Marks on my wrist. Silk scarves. Any other suggestions? Well, goodbye, Fenton. You were a bit of a failure as a lawyer. I'm glad my life didn't depend on your arguments. <laughs>
подожди ему, понад. There's nobody here. Darling, relax. What I don't see is why you've got a key to his flat. There was really nothing between you. It's no use my pretending, Jimmy. You're right. There was something between us. But it's all over now. I haven't seen him or spoken to him since I met you. And you expect me to believe that? You must, Jimmy, because it's true. Do you think I'd come up here tonight if it wasn't? You wouldn't have come at all if I hadn't made you. Of course not. I was going to try and cover it up, naturally. I didn't want you to know. If I hadn't found that key in your bag, you wouldn't have told me. Would you? Do you blame me? No, I suppose not. I'm glad you know the truth now. I don't want there to be any secrets between us. It's far too important to me for that. And anyway, it's not a crime to have had an affair and then found out that you made a mistake, is it? You know why I wanted to be certain there was nothing between you and Dickie? No. Because I wanted you to divorce your husband and marry me. And now? I want to more than ever. Darling. You will marry me as soon as you can get your divorce, won't you? <laughs> I don't know what to say. This is all rather sudden. Get me a drink, Jimmy. I don't want to touch his drinks. Well, I do. I need one. And so do you. And make it strong, darling. It isn't every day one gets a proposal. Well, don't laugh about it, please. I'm serious. I want to cable your husband tomorrow and tell him the news. You are a quick worker, aren't you? I'll get some ice from the kitchen. Jimmy, come and sit down here with me. Oh, it won't take a second. But darling, I don't want any ice. I want you. You can have both. I say, can you smell gas? Darling, come here. It's this, isn't it? Careless science, it's only half turned off. I'll open the window. Stop rushing about. Now what's the matter? I can't kiss you here. Not in his flat. Well, let's go somewhere where you can. Where would you like to go? Bottle party? Can't you think of anywhere more private? Yes, I suppose so. Darling, we are going to be married, aren't we? Yes, but... Do I... Have to write you a letter, Mr. Martin?
glad to hear of you tonight, if I didn't. I, um, bought you a little present today. You shouldn't have done that. It's only an old signet ring I came across in a junk shop. But just you read what's inside. Till death us do part. Vivian. Will you wear it? Till death us do part. Darling. What was that? What was what? I thought I heard a door close. It's only Rita coming home. She's very discreet. Oh, excuse me, madam. It's all right, Rita. I thought you said you'd gone to bed. You needn't worry about her. She knows how to hold her tongue. Yes, but darling... Stop worrying and say good night. Darling, when did you arrive? How long have you been here? I've been in for hours. You poor darling. Why didn't you phone me when you landed? I did. No answer. So I came on home and went to bed. Why didn't you wait up for me? Uh, I was dog tired. We had a rotten crossing. There was no one in anyway. Poor Lee. What a homecoming. And just the one night I'm out. You must tell me all about your trip. Was it successful? <laughs> Lee. I've been so miserable without you. Uh, what time did you turn in? Oh, about ten. Did you have something to eat? No, I didn't want anything. Let me get you something now. No, thanks. Why didn't you write to me, Vivian? It won't take a moment. Why didn't you? But I did, darling. Dozens and dozens of letters. But you said every day. But, darling, that was only a figure of speech. You know I was thinking of you every minute, and missing you dreadfully. But I couldn't just go on saying that over and over again, could I? It would have been so boring. And I've never bored you yet, have I, Lee? Not until now. But, Lee... You see, I don't believe you, darling. Were you on duty last night? Yes, sir. Did anyone ask for Mr. Fenton during the evening? No, sir. Did you see anyone strange? Anyone other than the usual tenants come in or go out? No, sir, I can't say I did. did Mr. Fenton often have visitors? Hmm. Not many, no. Any ladies? Sometimes, yes. One particular lady? Not so as you'd notice. All right, thank you. That'll be all for you two just now. Won't you want me anymore? Not for the moment, thank you. Oh. Oh, all right. Only I found him, remember? Yes, thank you. We're very grateful. There's a lady here to see you, sir. She's Mr. Fenton's sister. Oh, yes. Ask her to come in, will you? Yes, sir. This way, please. Come in, please, Miss Fenton. Sit down, won't you? What's the matter, Inspector? Why have you sent for me? I've got some bad news for you. Has something happened to my brother? I'm afraid so, miss. He... he isn't... Dead. <gasps> How did it happen? He was found this morning in there with his head in a gas oven. You mean he committed suicide? I don't believe it. 
Dick would never do such a thing. He's not that sort of a person at all. A man can't be forced to put his head in a gas oven, Miss Fenton. Dick wasn't like that. You'd better read this. But I don't understand. There's something strange about this. In what way? I realize you still love your husband and always will. But he knew perfectly well Vivian didn't love her husband. Who is this Vivian? Do you know her? Of course, it's Mrs. Warren. And your brother had an affair with her? Yes. And there was trouble with Mr. Warren? No. He's in America. You say your brother knew that Mrs. Warren didn't love her husband? We both knew. How? Because the man I was engaged to gave me up for her a fortnight ago. Are you quite sure about that? Perfectly. And what was the name of your young man? Martin. Jimmy Martin. I see. And you suggest that he took your brother's place with Mrs. Warren? I know he did. And she took your place with him, is that it? Yes. You must excuse my asking so many questions, but it is a bit complicated, isn't it? It's all very sordid and unpleasant. And it's all her fault. Yes, I'm sorry. Now, if you wouldn't mind giving me this Mr. Martin's address. Why? Are you going to see him? Well, just give me the address if you don't mind, and I'll decide about that later on. Yes, of course. He lives at number seven. Aren't you going to the office this morning? No. Why not? Anxious to get rid of me? Not at all. I've turned in my report, now I'm taking a few days off. To put some private affairs in order. What private affairs? Oh, private affairs. Where are the other papers? They're over there. Good morning. Mr. Martin! Mr. Martin! Hello there. <coughs> Thank you very much. My favorite flowers. Aren't they sweet? I... I beg your pardon. Not I... at all. Make yourself at home. By the way, I didn't quite catch your name. Vivian, introduce us. Jimmy Martin, my husband. How do you do, Mr. Martin? How are you? Have you known my wife long, Mr. Martin? I... Of course he hasn't. Only during my absence, I take it. I think I'd better go. No, no, no. I think I'm entitled to some sort of explanation. Isn't every husband who comes home to find a handsome young man calling on his wife with flowers? And at breakfast time, too. Do sit down, Mr. Martin. By the way, have you had your breakfast? Yes, thank you. I think you'd better go, Jimmy. Yes, of course. And I think he'd better stay. Lee, don't be ridiculous. Do sit down, Mr. Martin. Have a cigarette, will you? I don't know what you can hope to gain by this behavior, Lee. Mr. Martin, tell me, is it a habit of yours to call on my wife so early in the morning? Certainly not. But this morning, you just thought that you would. Is that it? You may as well know it. I'm in love with Vivian. Well, at least you're honest. He's a likable lad. Have you quite finished, Lee? Nearly. Tell me, Mr. Martin, does my wife return your love, do you happen to know? Yes. I think so. Is that true, Vivian? I refuse to take part in this ridiculous charade. But you're terribly curious, aren't you? You're not missing a word. Oh. Please go, Jimmy. I can't stand any more of this. You must forgive my wife. She's not usually so inhospitable. Then, of course, you know that, don't you? That's a fine place to park a car now, isn't it? Keep your mind on the job, Fox. We've got more important things to do. You wait here. I shan't be long. Good morning. I'd like to see Mrs. Warren, please. What name shall I say? Inspector Pembry. Will you come inside? Thank you. Excuse me, sir. There's a policeman called Inspector Pembry. Who does he want to see? Mrs. Warren. Has he brought any flowers? No, sir. Then show him in. Look 
come this way, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Inspector Pembry. Mr. Warren? Yes, can I help at all? My wife's dressing. It's a better friend of your wife, sir, Mr. Richard Fenton. Do you happen to know him? Fenton? No, I don't think I do. What about him? He was found dead this morning. Oh? What's that got to do with my wife? We found this letter near the body. It's addressed to Vivian. I think that's your wife's name, sir. Yes, it is. May I read it? If you wish. Thanks. I'm sorry to have to inflict this on you, sir. Did you know about your wife and this Mr. Fenton? No, I've been away for eight months. I only got back from America yesterday. Oh, really, sir? Then I expect this must come as a bit of a shock to you. Well, uh, yes and no. Yes and no? Well, there's no point in beating about the bush. I came back from America earlier than I expected because I was worried about my wife. She hadn't written for several weeks and I'd heard that, well, that she was going about with other men. Now it looks as if I misjudged her. You mean this letter makes it quite clear? Yes. Did you say anything to your wife about Mr. Fenton last night, sir? How could I? I didn't even know he existed. Oh, of course not, sir. Silly of me. But you did talk to her, I expect. Not very much. She didn't come in until quite late. Didn't she come to meet you then? No. But she must have known you were coming home? As a matter of fact, no. I thought it was uh, more of a surprise if she didn't. I see. Do you mind telling me what time you arrived back, sir? We landed about five. I came by air. Ah, yes. And after you landed? Look here, what have my movements got to do with all this? You may as well know, sir. There was another man in Mr. Fenton's flat last night. We found his fingerprints. For a moment, I thought it might have been you. If I'd known of his existence, it very easily might have been. You mean you might have taken the law into your own hands? Yes. It's a good thing you didn't, sir. Oh, darling, this is Inspector Penbury. How do you do, Inspector? He wants a word with you. May I ask if you knew a Mr. Richard Fenton? I did, yes. Why do you say did, madam? Well, I haven't seen him for some time. Have a cigarette? No, thank you. What's all this about? Mr. Fenton was found dead in his flat this morning. Donna, let me get you a drink or something. No, I'm all right, thank you. Do you mind if I ask you one or two more questions, madam? Of course not. Thank you. Were you friendly with the deceased? Did you know him well? We went out two or three times together, if that's what you mean. Did your husband know him or of him? No. He was someone I met just recently. When did you see him last? I, uh, I haven't seen him for, well, uh, since dinner with the Sandersons about two weeks ago. Did he ever say anything that made you feel he might take his own life? No. That's why it's so terribly unexpected. I hope you'll excuse me, Mrs. Warren, but I have to be more explicit. Did the deceased... Please don't use that word. Did Mr. Fenton ever... Well, you know if he was fond of you. I suppose he must have been in a way. Otherwise, he wouldn't have wanted to take me out. I don't mean that exactly. Did he ever tell you he loved you? I'm sorry, Lee. But if I don't tell you now, I expect our friend will ferret it out somehow. I couldn't help it. I never encouraged it, but he did. He told me he loved me. He even suggested I should divorce you. Of course, at first, his flattery turned my head. That's why I didn't write you. Then I realized how stupid I'd been and how very much I loved you. And I said I wouldn't see him again. But I still couldn't write you because I didn't know how to explain why I hadn't done so for so long. You do understand, don't you, darling? More than ever now, my precious. I was going to try and tell you this morning, but you wouldn't... I'm glad you have, because Fenton left a letter. A letter? And what you said just now explains perfectly what he wrote. Doesn't it, Inspector? It does indeed. What did he say? Just one more question first. What did you do last night, madam? I, uh, I went to a theatre with a Mr. Martin. He brought me home about a quarter to twelve. Did he come in for a while? Of course not. He saw me to the door, said good night and left. Thank you, madam. Here's the letter. He killed himself. How terrible. Terrible. Don't take it like that. He killed himself because you were faithful to me, didn't he? Yes, Father. Well, no one can blame you for that. You won't want to ask any more questions now, will you, Inspector? No. I'd better be going. Inspector. 
If there's anything else, please don't hesitate to ask me. However badly I may feel about this, it's not myself I'm worried about. It's my husband. Your husband, madam? I don't quite understand. Well, you know how people talk. And that letter, it looks so awful. Must it be published? Well, that's for the coroner to say, madam. I'll do what I can. Thank you, Inspector. Thank you, madam. You've made things much easier for me. Good day, Inspector. Good day. Lee, darling. Yes? Nothing. Hello? Oh, hello. I can only talk to you for a second. Lee's in the other room. Jimmy, listen. Dick Fenton's committed suicide. Who told you? Oh, is she there? Well, be careful what you say. Jimmy, listen. The police have been here asking all sorts of questions. They wanted to know where I was last night, and I had to tell them. If they ask you, say that you saw me home. And whatever happens, don't let out that I was in Dick Fenton's flat last night. No, don't worry, I wouldn't. No, of course not. All right, I'll watch my step. Bless you, darling. And be careful. That was her, wasn't it? Yes. Does she know? Mm-hmm. I can just hear her gloating. Dickie killed himself for me, you know. Isn't it too touching? Oh, she's not like that. Isn't she? First she lets her husband down. Then she lets Dickie down. Someday she'll do the same to you. No, I don't believe she will. Anyway, I'll take a chance on it. Do you really love her? Yes. Is she coming here? No, it's all right. Now, calm down. I'll go and see who it is. Good morning. Mr. Martin? Yes? I'm Detective Inspector Pembry. Could I see you for a moment? Yes, of course. Come in. Thank you. Through there. I believe you know Miss Fenton? Yes, we met this morning. I'd like to speak to you alone, Mr. Martin. Perhaps I'd better come back later on. That's all right, Inspector. I was just going. I'll see you to the door. Well, Inspector? I suppose you've heard of Richard Fenton's death? Yes, his sister was telling me about it. No, thank you. Just a few personal questions, Mr. Martin. Do you mind? Not at all. How long had you known the deceased? Since we were at school. You're engaged to his sister, I believe. I was. We uh, broke it off some time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. So far as you know, had Mr. Fenton any business or financial worries? He was a successful barrister. They don't have that sort of worry. Sit down, won't you, Inspector? Thank you. Any suggestion as to why he should take his own life? None at all. You think there might have been an unfortunate love affair? Not that I know of. Drink, Inspector? No, thank you. You can't think of anything in that line? No. When did you last see the deceased? At a party about ten days ago. I see. Perhaps you wouldn't mind telling me your movements last night. I went to the theatre. Alone? No, with a Mrs. Warren, a friend of mine. Dropped her off at her flat and came on home. Could someone confirm the time you arrived back? I'm afraid I can't help you there. I have no maid and I saw no one. Well, thank you, Mr. Martin. Hope I haven't caused you any inconvenience. No, not at all. Before you go, Inspector, may I ask you a question? By all means. Was it really suicide? I haven't the foggiest idea. Good day, Mr. Martin. Hello, what do you want? I've got something I'd like to show you here. And I've got something to show you. Look at this. Where was it found? In the waste paper basket in Fenton's flat. Roberts turned it in just after we left. It's the same as the other, the one by the body. The same, only different. Look at that. What do you think it means? He changed his mind. Or someone changed it for him. Murder. I shouldn't wonder. What have you got? This. Where'd you get it? Out of Martin's car. What is it? 
Thought you might know. Something he cleans the car with, I suppose. That's what I thought at first. But it's too clean for that. Stuck out a mile among the other stuff in the boot. And what's this for, anyway? I don't know, and I've no time to start playing guessing games now. Fox, smell that. Smells like the back of a cab. Anything else? Gas. Gas is right. Give it to me. What is it, do you think? I don't know. Gas. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Just a couple more questions, Mr. Martin. Reinforcements? Yes. This is Sergeant Fox, my assistant. Going away? Just for the weekend. Mr. Martin, are you quite sure your answers to my questions this morning were correct? Of course. Then before I ask you this final question, I must warn you that anything you say now may be taken down and given in evidence. What is all this? Just a formality. Are you quite certain you didn't visit Mr. Fenton's flat last night? Quite certain. Then how do you account for your fingerprints being found there? Fingerprints? Well, they must have been left from the last time I was there. When was that? About two or three weeks ago. Do you think Mr. Fenton would have left a whiskey glass on his table for three weeks? No, of course not. And perhaps you wouldn't mind telling me what really happened? Very well. I went there for a drink. When was this? Well, I dropped Mrs. Warren off at her flat at about 11.30. And I thought I'd call round and see Dickie. He wasn't in, so I had a drink and left. If he was out, how did you get in? I, um, oh, I had a key. You must have found it. I left it on the table by mistake. So you arrived just before midnight? Mm hmm about that. The doctor puts the time of Fenton's death a few minutes either side of midnight. So you see, Mr. Martin, it looks as if Fenton was in his flat when you called. But I swear to you, he wasn't. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't look in the kitchen. You mean he might have been lying in there and you wouldn't have known anything about it? Well, it's possible. You didn't go to the kitchen for water or soda or anything? No. And how do you explain your fingerprints being found on the kitchen doorknob? What? Oh, yes, well, I started to go to the kitchen, but I couldn't find the light switch and... I just didn't bother. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin, but I don't believe a word you're saying. I can't help that. I've told you the truth. We found the oven gas jet still on this morning. If the deceased had been lying in the kitchen when you were there, you must have smelt the gas. But I did. I remember now, and I said... I mean, I thought it was a leak. What's all this about, anyway? It was suicide, wasn't it? You asked me that before, this morning. Remember? Yes, but Miss Fenton was telling me that he left a letter. Well, what makes you think that letter showed he intended killing himself? If you let me read it, I'll tell you. Well, here's a copy. It's pretty obvious, I'd say. Explains everything. Not quite everything, Mr. Martin. The deceased found it difficult to write a letter giving up the woman he loved. Anyone under those circumstances might have written a dozen letters. We know for a fact that he wrote two. You've just read one. Now I'll show you the other. You mean the letter found by the body was to have ended the same way as that one? Precisely. You couldn't write a letter like that at the first attempt. Who could? So he threw it away. The murderer interrupted him while he was writing another, killed him, then finding the half-completed letter on the desk, realized that there was the final link to make it look like suicide. He didn't know about the full letter in the waste paper basket, waiting to put the noose round his neck. But I didn't do it. Didn't you? No, and I can prove it. How? He was found with his head in the oven, wasn't he? How could I make him do that? Why, it's ridiculous. Come on, Dick old chap, stick your head in the oven, I'm going to turn the tap on. We'll come on to that now, if you like. You see, Martin, you were very clever and you know it, but one or two things are going to trip you up, like the letter and this. Well, what is it? I was going to ask you. Well, I've never seen that thing before. When we searched your car, we found this in the boot. I've never seen that thing before. Someone must have put it in my car. Anyway, why should I want to kill Dickie? Because he was in love with Mrs. Warren, too. Oh, nonsense. Is it? I'll tell you this, Martin. In the whole of my experience, I've never seen a cooler, more carefully planned and premeditated murder. I've already cautioned you, and I shall now arrest you for the willful murder of Richard Fenton. You're making a great mistake, Inspector. Take him away, Fox. I'll be over in a few minutes. That young man of yours seems to be hitting the headlines. Who? See for yourself. Jimmy didn't kill him. He couldn't have. No, of course not. Because you were with him all the time, weren't you? I don't know what you mean. Don't you? Good morning, Rita. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Do 
You know Jimmy didn't kill Fenton because he never left your side all the evening. How do you know that? Because I happened to be there. Where? In Fenton's flat. But you couldn't have been. Unless you... Go on. Unless I killed him. No. No, you couldn't. Why not? How could you have done it when you didn't even know about him? I found out. The rest was easy. In fact, I only made one mistake. What was that? I thought Fenton was the only man in your life. He tried to tell me there were others, but I didn't believe him. Until you came in with Jimmy, then it was too late. Do you know what Fenton said? He said, you can't kill them all, you fool. Well, he was probably right. But Fenton and Jimmy in one day is a pretty good start, isn't it? Now what is it? Pest has just come. Well, put them over there. No, give them to me, will you please? Thanks. You don't expect me to believe any of this, do you? I don't see why not. It's all quite true. I worked out a foolproof plan for killing Fenton. When Jimmy turned up, I replanned things a little. Putting the pillow slip at the back of his car, for instance, instead of destroying it. If we don't pay the telephone bill in seven days, we're going to be cut off. You mean to tell me you were in Fenton's flat that night? That he was dying there? While we were talking in the next room? Exactly. I don't believe it. Oh, you don't, eh? Do I have to write you a letter, Mr. Martin? Remember? I see. Your mother wants to come and stay with us. Why she does always write to me, I don't know. Perhaps she thinks I'm kind of harder than our daughter. After you and Jimmy had left, I fiddled round Fenton's flat. And the more I fiddled, the blacker things began to look for James. You wouldn't really let an innocent man suffer for something you did. I suffered because of something he did. That's different. Not to me. I made up my mind to get my own back, and I'm getting it. You're mad. You must be. You love Jimmy Martin very much, don't you? Yes, I do. And you'd do anything to save him, wouldn't you? Yes. Well, now you're going to be in the interesting position of knowing that he's innocent and that I'm guilty and that you can't do anything about it. You're going to suffer slowly and exquisitely. And I'm going to enjoy watching you squirm. Are you in bed? When did Mrs. Warren go? This afternoon, sir, about three. Where did she go, do you know? No, sir, she just called a taxi and went. Did you hear what address she gave the driver? No, sir. She left a note for you, sir. Yes, I know. Could there be anything else, sir? No, you better go back to bed. I want to speak to Mrs. Warren, please. Warren. W-A-R-R-E-N. She says she's not staying at the hotel. Thanks. Dr. Dorchester, could you tell me if Mrs. Warren is registered with you, please? Yes. Uh, she's not there. Thank you. Is that Major Hefty 65? Riverside Hotel? Could I speak to Mrs. Warren, please? She isn't. You sure? Thanks. Mr. Martin, sir. Thank you, Fox. You and Gray wait outside, will you? Yes, sir. Sit down, Mr. Martin, please. You know Miss Fenton? Hello. Mr. Martin, I want to ask you some questions in a moment, but there's something I must check up on first. You won't mind waiting, will you? Haven't got much option, have I? No, you haven't really, have you? Excuse me. I suppose you arranged this. No. 
Yes, partly. What good did you think you could do coming here? I don't know. I just thought I would find out if there was anything to do to help. Well, there isn't. I know you didn't do it. And so do I, but it happens that the police can prove their own satisfaction that I did. Jimmy, do you love her very much? No, I don't think I love her at all. Then why shield her? Because if they could hang me on the evidence they got, they could hang her just as easily as an accessory. The significant thing is that pillow slip being in my car. Now, someone must have put it there deliberately. Whoever it was had a grudge against two people, Dickie and me, and hated us both enough to want to kill us. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, excuse me. Look, I'm sorry, but something very important has come up on another case. Would you mind very much if we postponed our talk to another day? No, Inspector, of course not. Thank you very much. Oh, Gray, take Mr. Martin downstairs, will you? I want you, Sergeant. Anything wrong, sir? No, that's what's worrying me. It's all too neat and tidy. It all adds up perfectly. Too perfectly. Don't you think that's just because we were lucky enough to come across the evidence quickly, sir? Maybe. I was wondering whether we were meant to come across it. You mean you, you believe the boy when he says someone else put the pillowcase in his car? I don't know. All I do know is that whoever planned this murder was a clever man. Cool, calculating, ruthless. But clever. Does that sound like Jimmy Martin to you? Ah, you can never tell with those quiet ones. He may have committed half a dozen other murders for all we know. That's right. Perhaps he's Hitler in disguise. He's about the right height. <laughs> Have you, Mr. Warren? Oh, good evening, Inspector. No, I'm just taking a walk. It's a long way from home, isn't it? As a matter of fact, I'm not sleeping very well. So I've taken to going for a long walk before I go to bed. Do you usually come and look at Fenton's windows? No, why? Oh, I see what you mean. The criminal returning to the scene of the crime and all that. I didn't say so. No, I should hope you wouldn't. Pity about young Martin, losing his head like that. Yes, isn't that? Nice boy. Yes, I understand. Well, remember me to your wife, won't you, sir? You don't mind, I don't think I will. She doesn't like being reminded of unpleasant things. Good night. Did you take the tablets I gave you? Yes. Two of the first night, three of the second, and four of the third. No effect? None at all. I've slept a wink for over a week. It's getting me down, I don't mind telling you. You've suffered from insomnia before. No. Appetite all right? So, so, nothing to speak of. Any unusual business worries, anything of that sort? No. Nothing you can think of to account for? No. Well, I'll give you another prescription and see what that does. But go easy on it. Only take them if it's absolutely necessary, and then not more than two. Let me know how you get on. Thanks, Doctor. When did you come back? About half an hour ago. You might look as though you're pleased to see me. You suppose I am? I thought you might be by now. Give me a light. Why did you go off like that? I told you in my note. Your hand's a little shaky, isn't it? Yes, I haven't been sleeping very well. You know you do look a little the worse for wear. You don't seem very worried yourself. I'm not. You're tougher than I thought you were. Not tough. Just logical and sensible. You see, Lee, I've thought the whole business out, quietly and reasonably. And I've discovered two very important things. What are they? First, that I love you, and second, that you love me. What makes you think that? Why else should you be so jealous of every man who so much as looks at me? Why else should you kill Dick? 
and Jimmy. To make you suffer something of what I've suffered. But, darling, that's silly, surely. I never loved them the way I love you. Is that true? Of course it's true. Why did you think I came back? Why did you? Because I was worried about you. Why? In case you might do something silly. Why should I do that? Because the responsibility for that boy's death is getting too much for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. I, I don't know what to do about it. I can't think straight. It's all my fault. I should have made you see that nobody means anything to me except you. But what about Fenton and Martin? They never meant that much. But why did you... Only because you weren't there and I was so bored without you. Vivian, is that true? You're not completely happy, are you? No. You're still worrying about Jimmy Martin. I can't let him hang now. He's not going to. I'm going to prevent that. No. Yes. Yes, I must say that I was there. Oh, that'd drag you in as an accomplice. No, there must be some other way, some loophole, if only I can think of it. Yes, Lee, that's right. There must be something you've forgotten. No crime is ever perfect. This one is. Too perfect. I saw to that. I didn't know I was going to want to undo it all again. But there must be something you've forgotten. There must be. Lee, try to think. Please try to think. Oh, Fox. Sir, Mr. Warren's been telling me the real story behind Fenton's death. See what you think of it. Do you mind, Mr. Warren? Well, I've already told you. Would you mind telling us again for Sergeant Fox? He's been working on the case with me. I'd like him to hear it from the beginning. Oh, very well. As far as I can remember, it was like this. On the day that I arrived back from America, I reported at my office, then rang up my wife. She wasn't in. So I put in my reports, cleared up, and went on home. I got to the flat about seven o'clock. As my taxi drew up outside, I saw my wife getting into Martin's car. I was naturally curious to know what was going on. Couldn't you have been? So I waited until they were safely in the car. Then I told my driver to follow them. They went to a restaurant, then to the theatre. When they came out after the show, I was there waiting for them. I followed them again, this time to a flat at Temple Court. Of course, I thought then that Martin was the reason why my wife hadn't written to me, and naturally, I thought the flat was his. So I waited outside for about ten minutes. Wouldn't a normally jealous husband have broken in on them right away? I wanted to be certain. Cigarette. So while I was wondering what I could do, they came out again. I just had time to dodge around the corner out of sight. They were laughing and talking and I tried to catch what they were saying. But all I picked up was the man's name, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. And I didn't much like the way she said it, I can tell you. After they'd gone, I tried the door. Which was conveniently open. As a matter of fact, it was. The catch hadn't dropped. They often don't unless you slam the door. It happens in my flat and I'm sure it happens in yours. So you went in? I thought I'd wait and knock hell out of this Jimmy when he came back. I looked carefully around the apartment, taking everything in. And I went into the kitchen. You know what I found there? A man dead with his head in the gas oven. I turned off the gas and picked up the letter. It's addressed to Vivian. When I read it, I realized the flat didn't belong to Jimmy. It belonged to the other poor devil, whoever he was. Then a thought struck me. I could turn this suicide into a murder done by Jimmy. That meant I had to get rid of every scrap of evidence that my wife had ever been in the flat. It wasn't easy. I had to think fast. I put our cigarette stubs in her pocket. Then I noticed the waste paper basket. It was full of unfinished letters. I took a look at some of them. They were all in the same stray. He'd obviously made half a dozen shots at writing that farewell letter before he got it the way he wanted it. One of them gave me another idea best idea of all. I left the finished letter in the wastepaper basket, put all the rest in my pocket. All except one, an unfinished one. The one you found beside the body, Inspector. Then I washed the glass Vivian had used so as to remove her fingerprints. And how did you know which one was hers? By instinct? No, by lipstick. Go on. In the same way, 
I got rid of the cigarettes you've been smoking. Leaving traces that only Martin had been there. Traces that you were bound to discover, Inspector. And what did you hope to achieve then by all this? Exactly what did happen. I knew that when I turned up, my wife would have to deny being in Fenton's flat with Martin. And when the body was discovered, she'd have to stick to our story. And when you, Inspector, found Fenton's first letter and Martin's fingerprints all over the place, after he denied having been there, well, you were bound to wonder what had really happened, weren't you? Undoubtedly. Of course, I was mad with jealousy then, trying all I could to hurt Martin. I regret it very much now. What did you do with all the letters you stuffed into your pockets? I took them away and destroyed them, of course. Then I had to find a way to connect Martin directly with a fake murder. That wasn't easy. If Fenton had shot himself, there'd have been a gun. But gas? Then I had a really brilliant idea. You know, the gas mask thing. I set to work and made it. How it could possibly be used in a strong, healthy man, even I can't imagine. But I knew if it was found on Martin, it'd make things even worse for him. You mean to tell me it was never used? But of course not. I invented it. Then how do you explain the fact... That it was impregnated with gas? Yes. Because in my thorough way, I didn't forget to play the gas jet over it. Very clever indeed, Mr. Warren. And at the risk of appearing a trifle dense myself, may I ask how you planted it in the car of a person you didn't know? Quite simple. Martin's car was outside my own front door and I returned from Fenton's flat. Where exactly did you put the contrivance? In the back right-hand side of the luggage compartment, correct? So what you're saying is that Fenton committed suicide and you made it look like murder. Is that it? It is. Very interesting, eh, Fox? Yes, sir. Very. Would that be all, Inspector? Yes, that'll be all. For the moment. You swallowed it. Hook, line and sinker. You're sure? Quite sure. Mind you, I was pretty good. You didn't say too much. George has got. Good Lord, now, just a few pills here and there, that's all. You were nervous? No, I had a couple of drinks before I went in just to start me off. After that, all set. Oh, Lee, I do hope so. What you worried about? Have another drink. George, buy a martini. I'll have another scotch. Oh, Mr. Warren, there's a gentleman to see you. Oh, thanks. Sorry to worry you again so soon, Mr. Warren. Oh, that's all right. You've come to arrest me for obstruction or withholding evidence or something, I suppose. No, we don't want you. We've got Martin. Surely my confession clears Martin. Well, that's just it, Mr. Warren. We don't altogether like your confession, as you call it. In fact, we're not inclined to believe it, unless you can produce a little more tangible evidence to support it. Why should I trouble to invent a story like that? Or because you were grateful to Martin for getting rid of Fenton so conveniently for you? Or because your wife asked you to? That's all nonsense. Everything I told you this morning is the truth. Perhaps I'm rather dull. But frankly, I don't believe any man could think as fast as you say you did. But I warn you, that's the evidence I shall give if you bring Martin to trial. Do you really think you should? You're sitting pretty. Why save him at the expense of yourself? Because I can't see an innocent man hang. That isn't what you thought a fortnight ago. Ah, oh, but I found out since then there was nothing between Martin and my wife. Your wife told you that? She did. And I believed her. I wish I could believe you, sir, but I can't. What more do you want? Just something to convince me that your story is true. That you really were in the flat that night. Well, let me think. There must be something. I know. There was a dishcloth over the oven door to keep the gas in. Oh, come now, sir. That's the sort of thing you could have read in the news of the world any time. Oh, wait a minute. The kitchen, I've got it. Someone had knocked the milk over. There was a pool of milk on the floor. Is that enough for you? Hmm. You know, it almost looks as though you really were in Fenton's flat that night. Well, of course I was. But I still don't think your story is true. Now you're being insulting. I hope not, sir. I don't mean to be. You know, sir, I learned a great deal about art on a case once. It seems that every artist has a certain style, and often it's not necessary for an expert to see the signature on a picture. He can recognize the artist from the style. What's that got to do with me? Just this, sir. Your alibi for Martin is too slick. If he'd told me your story, I'd have been more inclined to believe it. You see, it has the same style about it as the murder. Good afternoon, sir. Inspector Pembry, madam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Inspector. What can I do for you? Well, as a matter of fact, I've come to ask your help. I can't believe you need that. Oh, two heads are better than one, you know. It was your husband's idea. Really? 
Yes, he came to see me today and told me an extraordinary story. He said that Fenton really committed suicide, but because your husband was jealous of Martin, he arranged things to look as though Fenton had been murdered by Martin. I know. He told me all about it. I said he ought to go straight to you. I'm afraid it won't work, you know. I don't know what you mean. It's quite clear, surely. I don't believe your story and I'm not going to release Martin. Well, if that's your attitude, I don't know what I can do about it. You could persuade your husband to confess that he murdered Fenton. What makes you think my husband killed him? Everything points to it. You must be joking. No, no. If you were to ask me at this moment who murdered Fenton, I should have to say Mr. Warren. But I can't prove it. He's been too clever for us so far. But I can prove it against Martin. So either you've got to help me or I've got to go ahead and hang a man who's probably innocent. I think you better go. What you're suggesting is insulting and ridiculous. Very well. Look, Mrs. Warren, when Martin comes up for trial, you'll be called as a witness. And there'll be a lot of dirty linen washed in public. But if your husband confesses, we shan't have to call you. And you'll make a very attractive widow. To put it bluntly, don't you think it's a question of which of the two you prefer, your husband or Mr. Martin? How dare you? Of course I prefer my husband. Yes, Rita. I've got two seats for the Follies tonight. We can't go. Would you like them? It's not my evening off till tomorrow, madam. That doesn't matter. You take tonight off as well. Thank you very much, madam. I leave the tickets on the hall table for you. Now you go and ring your boyfriend. Yes, thank you, madam. I'm tired. Come in here and I'll give you a nice drink. Thanks. Had a busy day? Not particularly. You've been overdoing it again, you know. Yes, I suppose I have. I walked home. Good heavens, why? I wanted to think. Pembrey was at the office this afternoon. He's been here, too. What did he say? Don't worry, darling. Put your feet up and relax. There we are. I can handle him. What did he want? Oh, he was just probing around, as usual. I think he knows I did it. Did he say so? No, but he kept on hinting. He said he didn't believe a word of my story. He said more than that to me. What? He said he was quite sure you did it. Well, there you are. But he knew he couldn't prove it. I'm not so sure. Well, I am, and so is he. He admitted he hadn't got a thing to go on. Now shut your eyes, darling, and rest up a bit. Oh, I'm just off, madam. Have a good time. You look very nice tonight, Rita. Thank you, madam. What on earth are you doing? Packing. I can see that. What for? We're taking a trip. Don't be an idiot, Vivian. I can't stand any more tonight. Listen, Lee. I found the answer to the whole wretched business. You remember Pierre? No, who's Pierre? Pierre Roger, the lawyer we met in Paris. Well, what about him? Well, he's back in London. I spoke to him this afternoon. You didn't tell him anything? About me, I mean? Yes, I did. Well, you shouldn't have done that. Suppose he goes to the police. He won't. I know Pierre. You can trust him absolutely. Well, I hope you're right. Of course I'm right. Besides, a lawyer's like a doctor or a priest. They never repeat anything. All right. What did he say? He's very smart. You know that. And he says the best thing for you to do is to get out of the country at once. Not a hope. We'll be stopped before we've got across the channel. Pierre says not. He says they can't stop you without charging you, and we know they can't do that. He's flying back to Paris in the morning. We can have two seats on his plane. It'll never work. It's got to work. Oh, yes, and there's one other thing. Pierre said you shouldn't just walk out. That might look bad, as though you're running away. He said you should write the inspector a note, saying you're going away to avoid the publicity. I don't very much like the sound of that. Well, that's what Pierre said. I better telephone. No, darling, don't do that. 
He particularly said not, in case the line's tapped. Yes, I suppose they might do that. Oh, perhaps I... Don't move, darling. I'll get you some writing paper. He said, write the note and leave it here. Then take the car. Darling, then take the car down to the airport in the morning. All right. I'll try anything once. There you are. And the envelopes are in there. Vivian? Hmm? Do I have to write this tonight? Darling, the plane leaves at 7.30. I can't see you doing it in the morning. Well, I don't know what to say. Tell him the truth. You're fed up. You can't stand the publicity, and so you're getting out. I wouldn't say too much. I don't like putting things down on paper. You never know what people will make of them afterwards. Please yourself, darling. I'm only telling you what Pierre said. Well, I've got to have another drink first. The only drink you're going to have tonight is hot milk. Oh, I hate milk. Well, maybe just a little whiskey in it? Please. Don't go yet. Tell me what to say first. I'm no good at letter writing. That's your job. Well, you might give me a start. Darling, I've told you what to say. You're fed up, you can't stand the publicity, and so you're getting out while the going's good. Now get on with it. May I? Of course. I never know whether it's the milk that spoils the whiskey, or the whiskey spoils the milk. You can't have it both ways, darling. Oh, Ernie. Oh, what's up? Lost the tickets? No, oh, just remember, I've left them on the hall table in the flat. Oh, that's torn it. What do we do now? Well, we'll have to go back. Oh, we'll miss half the show. No, we won't. Not if we hurry. See if you can get a taxi. That's made me feel really drowsy. I'm not surprised. I put some of your tablets in it. Good. How many? Twenty. ready to go away with you. You would never have saved Jimmy. So you do love him? Yes. Yes, Lee, I do. I see. I would get a doctor. Please. Before it's too late. Please. Please. It is too late, Lee. But you needn't worry. You won't feel anything. Just get sleepier and sleepier. Vivian, for pity's sake. I don't want you to die, Lee. But you've got to. Why? So that I may go on living the way I want to live. Good evening. I want to speak to you for a moment. I, uh, I was just going out. I won't keep you very long. It's about Jimmy. 
All right. What is it? He asked me to give you this. He said there wasn't any point in his keeping it any longer. You're lying. Jimmy would never say that to me. I know Jimmy. Do you, Mrs. Warren? Get out. Very well. Good night. Tell me, is there a doctor in this block? Yes, on the block below. I'll go and get him quick. Inspector Penbury. Yes, quickly. Can I ask him another question? You can, but it won't do any good. I'm afraid we were too late. Have you anything to tell us, sir? No, madam. Mr. Martin won't see you. But did you tell him who it was? Did you say it was Mrs. Warren? Yes, I told him. And he still doesn't want to see you. But I must see him. It's very important. I am sorry, madam. But you don't understand. It's very urgent. Mr. Martin was most definite. He said there was nothing he had to say to you. Inspector, not again. As you say, Mrs. Warren, not again. I think this is the last time. Have you seen my husband? Yes, madam. Mr. Warren's in the bedroom. He died a few minutes ago. We were too late to save him, but we were just in time to learn how helpful you'd been in effecting his release. I don't know what you mean. Don't you, Mrs. Warren? Then you better come along with me to the station and I'll explain more fully. Yours, madam? Till death, us do part. <laughs> <laughs> 